Ground Control, Houston. Uh, we've just had loss of signal uh, from uh, Honeysuckle. Uh, and they've lost them on the main radio contact antenna in Australia at Honeysuckle Creek. The frustrating communications blackout that can occur when a spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere caused tense moments in the early years of the space age, perhaps most memorably during the crippled Apollo 13 mission. We're now coming to the moment, the last moments of Apollo 13, as it comes in, as it begins its re-entry. The best thing we can do now is just to listen and hope. All anybody can do now is cross their fingers. Where it took over six minutes, although they told the public it was only four, to re-establish communication with Jim Lovell and his crew. Normally, the blackout only lasted three minutes. It looked like a disaster, but it all ended well. There they are. There they are. They've made it. All three shoots out. Listen to the crowd on the boat. This whole communication blackout is caused by plasma. Piercing the plasma. Things re-entering our atmosphere travel above Mach 10. The speed is called plasma sonic. Fantastic. So of course, the US Air Force and military wanted to find ways to pierce the blackout. So why is there a blackout? The re-entry craft ionizes, that means turns the atmosphere into ions, producing a plasma which blocks radio transmissions. It resembles the shock wave created when an airplane hits Mach 1 and breaks the sound barrier. But plasma shock boundaries form at speeds above Mach 10. The military knew this issue had to be solved. They needed to communicate, maybe course directions, or even a self-destruct function for incoming nuclear ballistic missiles. You can't have an atomic ICBM missile out of contact during its last final vital stages of re-entry. In more modern times, the incredibly weak but vital GPS signal needs to get through to the craft to send its steering instructions. But all of this is blocked by plasma. For some things, plasma blocking can be an advantage because some plasmas can absorb radar information. They won't retransmit or bounce back a radar beam aimed at the object. So today, let's look at the secret military science behind piercing the plasma. Way back in the Gemini era, it was noted that this plasma blackout occurred and various devices were fitted to re-entering Gemini capsules to eliminate or dissipate the plasma problem. One thing tried was water injection. This possibly cools the plasma and produces little holes that you can transmit or receive signals through, but the amount of water needed during the length of re-entry made it impractical. The plasma engineering moved to ablative materials. It might be possible for parts of the heat shield to dissipate the plasma by burning off. This worked, but wasn't the final solution. For incoming missiles, this was tried. To literally have a spike pointing out the front beyond the plasma bubble, which could still receive or transmit radio signals and GPS. Another thing attempted was literally to throw out messages in a bottle. A series of small transmitter receivers were ejected from the re-entry vehicle to keep communications open. But if the US was really going to enter a plasma sonic world of over Mach 10, 
possibly Mach 15, they needed to keep communication channels open while the plasma masking took place. So what did they do to solve it? I really didn't know this. And what I'm going to tell you today is pretty secret. The space shuttle never suffered from plasma communication re-entry blackout. Now we think, as members of the public, it did during the tragic Columbia disaster, where sadly the craft broke up, NASA controllers were desperately trying to communicate with Columbia crew during the plasma blackout phase. Final, when are you expecting tracking? One minute ago, flight. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. But they knew that there wasn't a blackout anymore because the space shuttle had a system on board to solve the plasma problem. And this is how it worked. The bottom of the space shuttle was presented to our atmosphere and got very hot. But the top surface of the shuttle pointing away from Earth left a hole. If only you could transmit and receive audio and GPS data through that hole, and they could. They did it by communicating with satellites above the re-entry vehicle. And that's how it works. Anything plasma sonic, hypersonic vehicles communicate upwards to a satellite asset for steering, communication, self-destruct, or whatever the military needs. If you enjoyed this kind of video with hidden science, give it a thumbs up. And to help support my research independent of YouTube censorship, consider becoming a $1 Patreon. Because the truth is out there.